So I'm gonna start this video off with a question. How many of you guys, like between the ages of 21 to like 29 are still drinking? How many of you guys drink alcohol? Because I'm noticing that a lot of people within that age group are actively quitting alcohol. And I watched a video on it. And a lot of people were saying it's because alcohol just isn't healthy anymore. It just doesn't fit with their lifestyle. There's a lot of harmful effects from alcohol. A lot of harmful diseases that can come from alcohol. And I just wonder like, in the comments if you can let me know y'all still drink and if not why i'm just curious <laughs> i know very very random to start this video off with but it's just something that's been on my mind that at one point it was just normalized to just drink you know and we actually normalize drinking a lot more than we normalize other recreational activities you know but <laughs> now a lot of people aren't doing that anymore and i want to know why and i want to know if you're not doing that if is there like something else that you indulge in like a vice that you indulge in that you enjoy just as much yeah let me know in the comments welcome to my channel Hi guys, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Exis and this is my channel, Exis Does. Hi, howdy, how's it going? How are we doing today? Am I filming videos back to back and possibly content farming? Probably, but hey, who cares? We scan a consistent content queen, right? <laughs> if you were to ask me what I do on this channel, it is in between what it do, commentary and my best that's my little tagline now is it obnoxious is it is it a little annoying i don't know sometimes i'll review the videos i've done in the past and i'll be like oh my god you're like way too cringy <laughs> Like you should just give this up. You're too cringy. <laughs> Not even like endearing cringy, but like millennial humor cringy. And that's like so, that's so outdated. Nobody's doing millennial humor cringy anymore if you really want to talk about it. But let me go wash my hands. You guys moisturize by the way? What do you guys use to moisturize? I like to use the store brand Vaseline, like Vaseline lotion, not actual Vaseline, but like, or like the store brand lotion. Those are my favorite. Okay, anyway, um, yeah. So today's honorary plushie is a new one. It's this little elf person with ears. Are these ears? It's this little elf gnome with ears, I guess. I don't, y'all, do gnomes have ears like this? I don't know, but it, this is the honorary plushie today. That's gonna be taking me through today's video, okay? Uh, my boyfriend got it for me for Valentine's Day. It's the cutest thing ever, kind of. A little bit creepy, I'm not gonna lie. Like, there's a lot of fuzz here, and then these are ears, and I'm trying to figure out, like, why this particular gnome has ears and what type of mammal this gnome is. Like, if it's an animal or, like, an anthropomorphic person, or, like, like a Beastars character. You know how they, they were, like, human, but they had ears, you know? But then they, like, turn into animals, I guess? I don't know. But, <laughs> yeah, this is the honor plushie today uh very festive for valentine's day even though we are way way past holiday but you know might as well use him kind of keep this thing moving maybe, maybe he can help provide some comic relief throughout all of this you know yes today we're going to be talking about hot takes about music i think i'm long overdue i think i should make this a quarterly thing where every three months i just talk about music and where it's going and my theories about music i did recently cover ariana grande and her eternal sunshine era for that i did do like a broad consensus of like music industry like opinions that i have about it where it's going what's happening and so i think i i'm in the right place in the right time and during the year to do that again so yeah we're just going to talk about stuff that's going on with music some very popular things some theories i just have and you know if there are some things i say about your fave that bother you um you know come in peace and love do not come with disrespect okay and also well you know i said what i said and this is my platform so if you disagree oh well that's what an opinion is but also like if i'm clearly wrong on something you should probably tell me so yeah but anyway let's let's move on let's move forward okay let's uh Keep it going. Let's let's talk about some stuff going on with music, all right? So we're coming in hot. We're coming in hot and we're coming in swift. <laughs> um, I don't trust Taylor Swift. I do not trust that woman. We're, we're dropping the stink bomb today. There is something off about that woman. I do not, not know what it is, but I just do not trust her. I don't trust her. I do not trust her. 
I don't because it would be a completely different story if she was a talented oh okay whoa 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 Swifties don't eat me but also if you do you will be blocked hi how are you it would be different if she was a very strong vocalist like if she was really good like I'm talking like Tori Kelly levels of strong vocals Renee Rapp levels of vocals Yeba levels of vocals like if she was a strong vocalist I'd be like okay this makes sense um Adele level of vocal ability but the vocals aren't that strong Strong. I know the kids love her, but she doesn't really put on that much of a performance. I, I saw a bit of her era's tour. It didn't look that spectacular. Yeah. If Hillary Duff's career really skyrocketed, it would probably look like that of Taylor Swift's. Taylor Swift very much so gives me girl next door vibe, good girl vibe, approachable vibes. I think that's what makes her brand so captivating is that she does have that girl next door aesthetic about her. The, the idea that you could probably be her friend. She would be someone that would be willing to, like I guess for men, be willing to take a chance on you. Like she would maybe date you. The, the music that she writes about is relatable. Like you feel like you're the protagonist in her story, but I'ma just be real with you. The talent for me doesn't match up with the hype. It doesn't. Britney Spears, even J-Lo, yikes, we're gonna get to her, okay? Like the talent made sense for the hype because Britney Spears could dance and at one point could sing really well and J-Lo could dance. And so it's like, okay, there's a performance value that they have, but like, that's not even what I see with Taylor Swift. The rollout of the Midnight's era was very suspicious to me. One of the main reasons is because a lot of people who were covering the Midnight's era were people I did not expect expect to cover it right so like hip-hop commentators yeah there was a hip-hop commentator doing a case study on why taylor swift is so successful and what hip-hop artists not pop artists not country artists but hip-hop artists, male hip-hop artists can learn from Taylor Swift, a pop star who looks a certain type of way from her rollout and her success and the loyalty that she was able to create with her fan base. And this is when I was kind of like, wait, wait, wait a minute, what are we doing? She, she's loyal to her fans. You know, she re-recorded her music, created a narrative, the humble hero trying to go up against this record label that wanted all her music IP, which is commendable. I'm glad she re-recorded her music, but it's like, what, what, hip hop artists, what they can learn from Taylor Swift? The only thing they can really learn from Taylor Swift is what not to do during the 2008 VMA Awards. I am so sorry. You cannot learn hip hop. Okay, here's the thing. Taylor Swift, she's a good enough songwriter, okay? She produces a few albums that it, that's commendable that she was able to produce a few of her own albums. Awesome, cool, great. But she also is a woman that looks a certain type of way and also comes from means. Taylor Swift would not be Taylor Swifting the way she is now if she did not have a wealthy family to help support her. She kind of came from a family that knew business and knew it well. And so even if the talent wasn't all the way there, she was still one way or another probably going to take up space the way she does now. What on earth do you look like a hip hop commentator trying to school your audience on a proper case study on how you can obtain the same amount of success as a Taylor Swift. What are we doing? Most hip hop artists don't even have the same source of means as a Taylor Swift does. And that right there is when I knew there was something in the water, something fishy, something going on. Reese Witherspoon's on Twitter like, oh, I love the Midnight's Era album. You know how they get like, they like random celebrities will like commend an album and say it's really good. I feel like that's paid promo. Billboard top 100 for weeks and weeks on end, not even weeks, months and months, almost a year on end, still sitting up there. There's something in the water with her, but I think what really solidified it for me was the Grammys and how she went about handling the Grammys, how she was going to make a new album this year, do an album drop, how she got album of the year. There was something in the water about that. And I think we all collectively saw it. I mean, we saw it beforehand with the Super Bowl. They put so much of investment on like broadcasting Taylor's face in the Super Bowl because they know this woman is marketable. She sells right? But here's the thing, okay? I just cannot get behind the amount of success that she has gotten based off the talent that she currently has. I think it is impressive that she's produced her own album, but I also know a lot of other more talented artists who produce their own album and they get paid dust. 
I think it's impressive that she writes her own songs, but I also understand that there are other artists who write their own songs, doing a phenomenal job and still get paid dust. There is something in the water about her and my biggest conspiracy theory is that in the next five to 10 years or so, something's gonna unravel. I don't know what, I don't know who, something's gonna come into fruition. Adele, ironically her and Adele are the same age, but the way they infantilize Taylor, but have adultified Adele, even though she had a music career in her late teens is interesting to say the least especially if you want to talk about like source material that they talk about in their songs or they sing about in their songs Adele definitely can go toe to toe with Taylor Swift and probably does a better job when it comes to singing I don't know I don't trust her I said what I said if that offends you you can you can log off any hateful comments will be deleted I do not give a shit. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Jojo Siwa has recently rolled out her um, Good Girl Gone Bad era. She is no longer for kids anymore. For those of y'all who do not know who Jojo Siwa is, she got her start on Dance Mom, being one of the kid dancers on the series. She did not last that long. Personally, Abby Lee Miller was a freaking tyrant with those children. I don't know how they allowed and greenlit that show to be on as long as it was. It is what it is. From there, Jojo Siwa was able to transition into being a content creator and making content for younger kids, selling merchandise, um, creating music videos, working with Nickelodeon, having a bunch of brand deals. She had a very successful and lucrative career with the youth. Something I did notice, however, is that older, creators always dunked on her in commentary videos. They did not like this girl. They hated this girl. They found any, any and everything to not like this girl. And I, I have a theory, okay? My, I've said this before. We, we don't like stuff that girls like. We don't like stuff that teenage girls like. We don't like feminine, remotely feminine things. We wanna drag them through the mud. But I find it especially creepy that people upwards their early to mid twenties are out here dragging a teenager for making money, making making younger girls feel happy and empowered in themselves. I find that very weird. I find that very creepy. We hate things that kids like, but then we also in the same breath demand that kids act their age. But then we make fun of the kids who do actually act their age and engage in content that is strictly for them. I just find that weird. I find that weird a little bit. Which one is it? Do you hate kids? Probably. Just be honest with yourself. It's okay. Kids are kind of gross sometimes. I get it. But with Jojo Siwa doing her Good Girl Gone Bad arc right now, where she is completely rebranding as... A, a queer pop icon. A queer pop icon, if we even really want to call it call it that you know um she has came out with her new rebrand and her new music video where she is toting a darker color palette jumpsuit with um an exuberant amount of face makeup and her uh, new music video called karma and it has had the internet in all different types of shambles people have been making commentary reviews dissertations about the whole entire thing and during this press release or press run Jojo was adamant on saying this is not for kids anymore. I, I'm inspired by Miley Cyrus and I'm inspired by Britney Spears and their arc from going from a good girl to a bad girl to being taken more serious in the media, all right? One thing I will say that I commend Jojo for is that she did not use another racist culture in order to prove that she was an adult. Normally those women, those pop icons that do try to do the good girl gone bad evolution, they normally take attributes from black culture in order to prove that. I think the reason why the rollout for Karma is flopping so hard is a couple things. One, I feel like it does not look like there's a stark contrast from what the costumes that she used to wear as Jojo Siwa for the girls. I'm a pop back like a boomerang or whatever. She just took the attributes from that branding and then just did like a color reverse and was like, guys, I'm edgy now. She just did like opposite colors. She just did like, like blues and blacks and sequins and all. 
sequins and all of that and was thinking oh yeah guys this is gonna work but see this this is edgy right and it isn't it looks very immature it looks very juvenile because it harkens back to her jojo siwa era but it doesn't age it up at all it just keeps it at a very immature um level and i think that's why people already just based off of the costume alone weren't able to take her seriously a lot of people talk about like her dancing as well i'm not a dancer i've watched videos on dancers critiquing her dancing okay they say that she doesn't have a lot of texture in her dancing she doesn't have a lot of texture and if dancing is a language she's always yelling she doesn't let the moves that are impactful actually stick and the silhouettes don't really sit as well she very much so gives dance competition but she doesn't give swag and so I think when you enter into this adultified version of your life where you want to be taken seriously as a musician or as an, a pop icon or whatever, you, you have to take into consideration like the swag of it all, the swagger, you know what I mean? There has to be something that makes us feel like, oh, okay, no, she's serious. And I think just on her choreography alone, it feels very juvenile as well because it very much so gives and one and two and three and four and uh, karma's a bitch and it really should just be like karma's a, like like you know swag swag for her to solidify herself as a queer pop icon swag could work in her favor i think also what's not working for her as well is that she's not really understanding the fact that the good girl gone bad arts that worked for britney christina and miley only worked because it was meant to be something sensational and salacious for men to consume and Jojo Siwa already doesn't come off as someone meant to be consumed by men and that's unfortunate because men shouldn't be the first people to be thought of when doing a rebrand but already the controversies that happened between those three women was able to click because they were perceived as by men the reason why it's not clicking for Jojo is because I don't think she is perceived to be a by anybody <laughs> to be honest and I think there's a sense of immaturity to it where it's like hey look what I can do guys I'm a part of the cool kids right karma's a bit you know what I mean you know what I mean and I think that's why it's not working I'm not saying that Jojo Siwa is ugly at, in any way shape or form but what I am saying is that if you're going to do the good girl gone bad arc you really have to understand that that arc is rooted in some form of sexism some form of patriarchal standards that push the envelope that is allowing those artists to take off into those eras the way they did. In my opinion, for Jojo Siwa, what I think she should probably do is, I don't know if y'all know this artist, Remy Wolf. She's very tacky, but like very adult contemporary. That's something I think Jojo Siwa can do where she can evolve her gaudy pink neon aesthetic that she had in her Jojo Siwa era and really rebrand it into something more adult. Instead of tapping so much into the sexualization of her being a queer woman, maybe she she can tap into the artistry of her being the brand Jojo Siwa and evolving it to be a little bit more adult. Here's a good way to put it. Whenever I watch Remy Wolf's videos, it feels like I'm on something. I'm on something, right? I would like to see that with Jojo Siwa. I don't know if she's ever indulged at all. I, I don't think she has to, but just something very psychedelic, something very different, but still using those colors that she used in her era as Jojo Siwa, the brand marketable to children, just rebrand it so that you're more marketable to adults. But like this rollout with Karma, very bad. This isn't, it wasn't good. It was, it was bad. I've never had the most secondhand embarrassment in my life than watching what Jojo put out for the Karma rollout and maybe we can go back to the drawing board and rebrand all right all right uh yeah next take okay so tyla wow i did not expect this to be tyla's year but she has been having a really good year tyla is an r&b afrobeat um, piano south african artist and i am not going to lie i love her i do i think she is so adorable i think she is a wonderful dancer and more importantly i think she is a talented singer i think she is doing everything right i think she is what we have been looking for i thought we would see in, in tate mccray what we see in tyla but it didn't seem like tate mccray's newest album did all that well and i think they were trying to get that impact that tyla has through ice spice 
but first of all ice spice hasn't really rolled out and hip-hop female hip-hop is like a completely different avenue i think what really interests me about tyla is her dedication to her craft and i think that's what everyone forgets about when talking about her everybody wants to say oh she's so beautiful she's gorgeous she's lovely and she is a very beautiful girl then we got into the controversy about her calling herself colored and not calling herself a mixed raced woman to that i say i am not south african i am not first generation african i am african american i am black american i'm from america okay i can't sit up here and i don't think it's behoove of any other black americans to sit up here and try to gatekeep what a woman calls herself from her country you can be critical of it and you crit can critique it and be like mm, i don't know it's not a good look to sit up here and try to overcorrect somebody whose culture doesn't reflect that of our own black american culture you know that's just my opinion another controversy that she's had is that she is a light-skinned mixed race woman that is able to take up space and predominantly r b in black area a uh, couple couple things to unpack here okay tyla isn't the first person to do this she she isn't the last doja cat is a biracial woman. I guess you could call her mixed race, but she only has two races, so she's biracial. She does the same thing. She she dibbles and dabbles when it's convenient for her, let's be honest, in R&B and hip hop music, and nobody blinks an eye, okay? I know people like to make the argument that this mixed race woman is taking up space in black music and black media that is an argument that needs to be impacted and that is an argument that can be valid but like let's not sit up here and act like afrobeat on piano and the r&b undertones that she has with it isn't rooted in blackness and black culture just because afrobeats and on piano isn't rooted in black american culture doesn't mean that black people are not the ones mostly consuming that type of music so i think when we make that argument it feels a little bit disingenuous because she is making music for that particular space. And this is early on in her career, who knows? She Her influence is Rihanna. She might change her whole entire sound for the next five years and then we can come back and have this conversation again. But for now, the overlap between R&B and Afrobeats music is very prevalent and the individuals consuming the most of that music are black people. I haven't heard Samantha and Tyler listening to Burna Boy. Maybe the few outliers and maybe the white South Africans, but that's few and far in between, you know what I mean? I can understand why she's taking up space in the R&B and Afrobeats market. I can completely understand because Afrobeats does overlap severely. And in some cases, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit better than R&B to be completely honest. So like, I can understand why she's there, all right? Another thing people like to say is that Tyla is a light-skinned woman taking up space, da da da, this and that. I made a video, I don't know if I'm gonna post it, about colorism and where we are with it and how toxic it's kind of become through the internet. I don't know if I'm gonna post it because these conversations get me very, very exhausted and I can't keep talking about this stuff. Here's what I'm gonna say about Tyla, okay? Tyla is a brown-skinned woman. She's a brown-skinned mixed-race woman, which she would call is a colored woman, okay? She is not light-skinned. If Tyla is a light-skinned woman, then that means Chloe and Hal Beyonce and maybe even Megan Thee Stallion are also light-skinned women because she carries the same complexion of them. I think what people are co confused about with Tyla is that she doesn't necessarily benefit from colorism. She benefits from featureism. Her features do not read as traditional African features. Maybe because she's mixed race, I don't know. And I think that's where people get tripped up a little bit is because I don't think they understand that like the benefits that she has isn't rooted in colorism, it's rooted in featureism. And those are two different things. You could have features that favor more of a exotic preference, but not necessarily be light skinned or not necessarily benefit from colorism. You can have those, I've seen that before. But more importantly, like TLDR, the main thing we gotta be talking about with Tyla is that that woman is talented. See, like we're having all of these conversations about her, but forgetting the fact that like, we haven't seen someone like a Tyla with the exception of the, the queens of pop who have solidified themselves over the years. For the past five to six years or so, we haven't seen someone like a Tyla, like a new and upcoming pop starlet in a very very long time tyla sizza victoria monet are carrying us in vocals performance value and just pop star like good traditional this is how you do pop stardom they are doing it so well we haven't seen that in a while and i wish we would stop talking about 
Tyla's aesthetics and looks, whether she's a steak dinner or a McDonald's dinner, that's weird, stop comparing women to food that you're into, or whether or not she's a, supposed to be taking up space in a music genre that is so clearly taken up by black people like I really do feel like we should just appreciate the fact that Tyla is giving us everything that needs to be given at the moment she's a great vocalist she's a great performer she's a great singer the clothing is on point Tyla is that girl like I'm sorry like is she the next Rihanna I don't think so <laughs> I don't think we need to be comparing her to Rihanna if I were to compare her to anybody right now it would probably be Shakira like a South African Shakira but I do not think she's the next Rihanna yet no uh, I don't think there will ever be someone that comes close to being the next Rihanna. But I think that Tyla is very successful and I think she sh should stand on her own. And I think we should really appreciate the fact that she's a very talented artist, not the discourse behind who she is as a woman, who she is racially, what isms she benefits from. We can have a conversation about it in a, in a societal construct level, but I think with Tyla alone, it should just really be like, no, this girl can sing, this girl can dance, this girl has talent, you know? I don't know, that's, that's how I feel about that. And also, if it's a matter of like futurism or that's bothering you, Let's support the black women artists out there that re do read as black or who are deeper skinned, like Victoria Monet or SZA or Dochi, which leads me to my next point, okay? All right, so who really should be taking the crown of the princess of hip hop are Flo Millie, Dochi, JT. We can clearly tell with the support of the barbs that people like JT just for how she's moving as an artist, that she's starting from small beginnings and that she is willing to divest herself away from young Miami and the shenanigans that she got herself into and she's willing to take a step back go back to the drawing board start her tour on a very smaller scale where she is just touring at clubs and building that fan base the only problem is is i've been hearing that some of the club performances haven't been that good she shows up late and then in one performance she called everybody broke which i mean i'm so sorry when it where we're in a time period where an impending recession might come ain't nobody want to hear from no popular rapper how broke they are nobody want to hear that you know but maybe that's her brand you know she even said in sideways she isn't friendly and she doesn't f with you n words so you know maybe that's just the type of brand she's trying to push that's fine by me if that's what she want to do but like i think jt being the successor of hip-hop comes strictly from the barb fan base really liking jt because nikki likes jt which already is a bunch of weird politics that i don't want to get into dochi okay mad talented disgusting i've mentioned this about two times already how dochi needs her flowers how dochi is on a come up that dochi need, you need to be looking out for that girl that girl is doing crazy things she's genre bending in ways that we aren't used to she's providing a voice and a nuance to her existence as a black woman that i have never seen before in my current life that i know younger black girls can really to in their life right now. Dochi is amazing and on top of that she is very gorgeous and Miss Mamas can rap. Uh, she is a rapper's rapper. She can rap, okay? The only criticism I have about Dochi is that you can so clearly thought I saw a bug that you can so clearly tell what her influences are. Nicki Minaj obviously, Eminem, Tyler the Creator. As she evolves I would love to see her kind of steal what they've done but not copy directly but she 100% deserves her flowers and deserves to be where she's at and I, I need people to invest in her okay and and then there's Flo Millie right and this is the thing the closest woman rapper who is close to being the princess of hip hop right now is Flo Millie because the thing about her is that she is giving us the same theatrics, the same cadence, the same energy that a young Nikki was doing, but in a way that is so unique to her. It's very on brand for her. Not only that, Miss Mamas is mad consistent. Like she came out with, ho, why is you here? Ho, why are you still here? Okay, ho, I guess you can stay, whatever. Like she is super consistent and something I don't think 
think y'all are really understanding about Flo Millie. The songs that she has that have taken off, you listen to the crowd, they know every single word of the song. Where have we seen that before? Like conceited. Long ass weeping and down my back. I wanna hit him with a baseball bat. Oh, so lit. Like everyone's singing that song in unison. They know the words. Even when she was performing some of her older music from like 2020, people knew like rap, flow beef rap mix. I'll put the name down there, but people were singing the, the, the songs to that. People like Flo Millie. Like they like her, her music's good. Her cadence is good. Her bars are good. She's probably the closest thing to being the next princess of hip hop. And she's even doing her rollout pop properly where she too is touring at clubs. Apparently she was at Revel in Atlanta like a week or two ago. She's doing everything right. And I am so, so excited to see how she evolves as an artist she, and she's only like 23 like her and Dochi are only like 23 24 years old I am so excited to see where their careers take off Dochi I think she toured with Beyonce she was an opening act for Beyonce and she was an opening act for Doja Cat her performances are amazing her brand is amazing she already knows who she is she said I'm from the swamp and I'm gonna give you trucker core bitch what's good Flo Millie over here like ho why is you here I guess you can stay and it's making bops that every single person knows. I love Flo Millie, I love Dochi. I, I stand 10 toes down on them. I stand on business with them. They, Those are my bitches. I love them so much. And those to me are the real princesses of hip hop. JT still has some proving to me because there's not a lot of music that has came out from her. Next take. Oh, okay. Uh, SZA should have won album of the year. Going right back to that when I said I didn't trust Taylor, Taylor Swift. SZA should have won album of the year. Personally, this is a polarizing opinion. I do not think Beyonce really needs album of the year. She doesn't need it. She already has more than enough Grammys. But SZA definitely should have won. Everybody loved that album. That album was innovative. That album was thoughtful. The production was innovative. The genre she was experimenting with, the writing. She writes about the same shit that Taylor Swift does. Maybe a little bit more honest, maybe a little bit more toxic, but SZA should have won album of the year. She should have. It should not have been Taylor. Like you cannot convince me that there is any song in Taylor Swift's Midnight's album, maybe in Evermore or Folklore or whatever, but in her Midnight's album that warranted album of the year. It was a very commercially successful album. It wasn't groundbreaking. It wasn't breaking genre. It says it should have won album of the year. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just keep it at that. I can't wait to see what she does with Lana. The sound changes. One of the biggest criticisms I will say about SZA is that sometimes song material that she writes about starts to get very repetitive. So I hope we can see a differentiation, a diff, diff, a difference in that as she evolves as an artist. At some point, there should be an evolution from the tumultuous relationships that we're in. You know what I mean? Moving on, next point, next point, next point. J-Lo, J-Lo, oh my God. This is who we really need to be comparing Beyonce to, right? Beyonce came out in the 2000s, like as a prominent single artist in the 2000s. Her competitors, her contemporaries were Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Justin Timberlake, J-Lo, Pink. Those were her contemporaries. Fast forward some 20 years later and look who's standing. Look who's standing tall and proud and look who's groveling and scrambling and fighting for scraps of the audience's attention. J-Lo is in her flop era and it is brutal. Miss Mamas is going out bad. I am a Leo. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell. J-Lo is a Leo. Leos are very prideful. They don't like to be told that they are wrong. But in this case, I wish J-Lo wouldn't have moved in her Leo mannerisms and would have listened to someone when they told her, anyone, because a lot of people told her, this is not going to work. Stop, what are you doing? For those of y'all who don't know, J-Lo just released, released her latest studio album project titled This Is Me Now. And then to accompany the studio album project This Is Me Now, she also released a 90 minute, 120 minute long visual of her album to, to the masses. And then she released a documentary about her making the visual album movie blockbuster for her audience and then release a, a tour a tour to the masses as well to promote this 
studio album that was coming out. Every single thing that she's released for this era has flopped miserably. It started with people saying that Spotify streams for This Is Me Now were horrendously low. Nobody was listening. It started with that. Then it started with people commentating on how horrible her visual album movie was, how it was terrible, how it was so overly produced over budget and provided absolutely nothing and had a terrible story. Then the clips started coming out where she's trying to call all her celebrity friends to feature a cameo in the movie and they all decline and they all say no. This reminds me of the time when I was a kid running around, hair all messed up, running on the block. People coming out of the woodwork saying, girl, leave the block alone. You weren't even from the block like that. What are you doing? Nobody knows you. You can't even get a block order right. What are you talking about? The block needs to be left alone. And then there's other clips of her with or Ben Affleck. And then there are a bunch of people coming out saying that JLo's actually a bitch. And I'm just like, what is, did someone not pay their Illuminati payment? Cause she's going out sad. Like what is going on here? It just started to be a trend where people just dunk on JLo. And I can't say that it wasn't a long time coming. It was definitely a long time coming because time after time we were told that JLo doesn't sing her own music that Ashanti, Brandy, random people, what Natasha Ramos from Connecticut, Natasha Ramos from Hartford, from the Blueback Square was talking about how she sang a lot of the songs for JLo and her Jenny in the Block era, This Is Me. She was the one doing the vocals for that. Megan Trainer came out and said that she had to give her song away and she was devastated at the hands of JLo, who lay gasp also wasn't singing her own music. Girl, I She's another one of them who just hops on trends and it's just so obnoxious to why. She uses her um, existence as a Latina woman when it's convenient for her. And then when it's not, she'll throw that away and rebrand to some version of whiteness, right? And I think the biggest problem with um, JLo is that not only does she lack authenticity, like she really lacks authenticity as an artist, like you think of Cardi B who's from the Bronx and you can tell she's a Bronx girl by that way she talks, by the way she carries herself, by how authentic she is, by her being on Love and Hip Hop New York. Like you can just tell. JLo is like cosplaying this hard as nails Bronx character that isn't who she is. She went to private school. Not to say that if you don't go to, if you go to private school, you can't be from the hood or whatever, but like she went to private school. It seemed like she had a pretty steady life and she's cosplaying as like this hard girl that like grew up in the gutter ball areas of the New York streets and that's just not the truth and people are starting to realize that and basically realize that her whole like trajectory of her career her life story her origin the way she came up the way Mariah Carey said that she didn't know her it's all just not true and it's not working in her favor and I'm so glad that JLo honestly is getting her comeuppance to be completely honest with you because she has been known to constantly steal and ride waves of individuals that she she proudly thinks that she can go toe to toe with. You saw it with Hustlers where she fell away because she couldn't get a Grammy and how she was on this panel. How the hell she was able to get on this panel with all these talented actresses, I have no idea. She's on the panel, mean mugging Lupita Nyong'o. Um, but with us, I had to play two characters in one movie and I had the time it usually takes me to prepare for one. <laughs> And these two characters are diametrically opposed to each other. They are individual, but they're also um, two entities that ultimately are one. A challenge just in terms of how to organize it in my head, mm. you know, mm -hmm. and uh, how to how to make them distinct and yet feel like I think you're always kind of excited uh, at the undertaking of, of a new role a new movie and I've done them for so long and all of, of all people who gave the performance of her life in us and suddenly shift the attention to her talking about how hard it was for her to play a stripper in a movie called Hustlers and not to say that that movie wasn't good it was good but it's like girl like you don't compare where you can't 
compete. Please, you're making yourself look foolish. And then on top of that, this is something I didn't realize until recently. Miss Mama's really be thinking she can go toe to toe with Beyonce. She really be giving us Beyonce light. She be looking at Beyonce's performances and thinking she can do the same thing, but better. And it's like, you can't like, and I knew this was gonna happen. I knew, I knew, I knew. I knew that we would get a lemonade era from JLo. This was her lemonade era, that that's what she was producing. And it was horrible. I also knew she was full of shit when she did a whole hour long Netflix documentary on her producing or making the Super Bowl performance. That performance was only 15 minutes long. What? production. Beyonce, she did like an hour and 40 minute long performance. You only did 15 minutes. What what documentary is needed? And quiet as it's kept, okay? A lot of the people there were really there to see Shakira, not you. Just being brutally honest. What was a good performance though? But like I said, just her thinking that she can have a lemonade moment and it's stick and it'd be so extravagant and extra that she thinks that people would be into this in 2024. When people were actively critiquing how they are tired of over embellished, over the top blockbusters movies, you come out with an over embellished, over the top, blockbuster inspired visual album. What is going on? I don't know where JLo should go, what chapter she should go in her life and her career right now, but here's what I will say. I think she should just lean more into acting. I hear that the book, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is coming out. I would love to see her play an adult Evelyn Hugo or a um, retired Evelyn Hugo. I would love to see her do something like that. I would not like to see her do any more music. It, your time is up. Your time is done. There's too much information about you. You don't sing your own music, okay? Like, just hang it up, hang it up. I also would love to see her direct a lot of stuff for the pop girlies. Like, like really take the Tiana Taylor approach for the pop girls. I would love to see that from her, but I think her ego is too big and inflated that she wouldn't be willing to do that. And I also wish she would be a little bit more nicer to people. There's no reason for her to be that much of a see you next Tuesday to individuals, but yeah. Anyway, JLo's going out bad. I don't know. I don't know. What to, I don't know what's going to happen with her, but next topic. Okay. So uh, Camila Cabello. <laughs> She has currently came out with her new era of hyper pop. She started with toting like a blonde haired brown root hairdo. And then she started dressing a little bit more like futuristic cyber pop princess, right? And on her Instagram, which I was like, okay, that's interesting. That's a choice. And then she came out with I Love It featuring Playboy Cardi. I like hyper pop. Don't get me wrong. I'm a hyper pop stan. I, I love me some Charlie XCX. I love me some Kim Petras. I love me some 100 Gex. Slater, Slater, I love them all. I do. And I think that's the gradual evolution of pop music. And there needs to be an established pop artist to invest in that genre to take it mainstream. Charlie XCX is doing phenomenal but I think for it to be taken seriously as like a genre people should be into um it has to be like an established like like a doja cat you know what I mean if that makes any sense a commercially successful artist so uh Camila Cabello takes a stab at hyper pop and it's bad it's bad it's terrible and I remember watching it in real time I was making myself some orange chicken. The oil was frying. And I remember just like giving the biggest stank face to my MacBook as I saw her perform I Love It in this music video. The problem I have with Camila Cabello is unironically not the racist stuff she did and that came out about her in 20, 2018. Um, apparently she apologized profusely for it and she did the work. I don't care. She was like 14 or 15 when she did that stuff. We were all on some dumb bitch shoes at 14 or 15. I could care less what you were doing at a young age, okay? I don't even care that she like abandoned Fifth Harmony to have her own solo career. I don't care about that entirely, really. Like you look at Destiny's Child and the way Matthew Knowles and Beyonce Knowles moved in that. And then you look at the way other girl groups, other boy groups move when they want to go solo dolo. I could care less about that. The problem I have with Camila Cabello is that she is so painfully nondescript that it's not even funny anymore. Like why is this artist so generic? They have absolutely nothing to provide. Remember in like 2015 when pop was really popping and you had like your generic artist 
artists here and there, your Alicia Caras, your Haley Steinfeld, your Zara Larsons. Zara Larson is pretty talented though. You remember that? It's like Camila Cabello is festering in that moment of music and has never evolved out of it. Normally those artists that fester in that moment, they kind of stay probably because that's what they're comfortable with. But like, it's it almost feels like Camila do, does these extravagant stunts, like her getting with Shawn Mendes, creating a, a celebrity romance to circulate around his album and her single, Senorita, and then her moving into hyper pop, right? It's like she does these really big moments and they don't hit because they're so painfully nondescript. There is nothing of substance that Camila Cabello can come out with. And that bothers me. That bothers me a lot because she is a talented singer. She could sing really, really well. It just goes to show you that you need so much more than vocals nowadays in order to really stick. Vocal ability now, unfortunately, is a nice to have. It's not a requirement and that sucks. It feels like you have to bring something to the table in order for a label to actively invest in artistry and development for you. And it feels like Camila Cabello had the artistry and development. She had the vocal ability, but the branding just isn't clicking. And she did Fifth Harmony dirty. Maybe I do care about that a little bit more than I let on. And this big shift in music genres just proved to us that the music isn't musicking. It's not musicking. It doesn't feel genuine. It doesn't feel authentic. It doesn't make sense. I Love It was horrible. The chorus was bad. It wasn't because she was repeating the same phrase over and over again. It was just bad. The little choreography she did wasn't like, it made no sense. There is a chaos to hyper pop where you don't know how to take it. But once you go on the journey of a hyper pop song, it starts to make sense at the end. Charlie XCX does a fabulous job at this. 100 Gex does a good job. Slater does an amazing job with it too. Kim Petras does a great job. They, they, they all do a great job. But I think trading in your brown locks for a blonde, dark rooted wig, copying the aesthetics of these pillars of hyper pop and hoping that you can do a successful rebrand is not what's going to get people to start noticing you. I know a lot of people are like proud at what Camilla's doing and that she's breaking barriers and who knows, I might be proven wrong when she finally drops the album and it's actually good. I just don't like the fact that there's a lot of disingenuous branding done with Camila Cabello. I just don't like it because she's talented and she can sing, but her music just doesn't stick in the way I think she feels like it should and in the way that we all kind of expected her to, especially when she was like the favorite in the Fifth Harmony band. You know what I mean? This isn't it. This hyper pop era is like, it kind of parallels what Jojo C was doing a little bit where it takes itself too seriously when you know damn well this isn't how we knew Camila Cabello. You know what I mean? So had to let that off my chest. But yeah, I think that's it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you continue to watch, let me know in the comments how you feel about these takeaways. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, just a disclaimer, a lovely, lovely, beautiful disclaimer. Okay, guys, listen, if you feel moved or compelled to give me hate comments because I came for your fave, you will be deleted, okay? relax, it's okay. People are allowed to have opinions about your fave if they don't like them or if they don't, they're not into them, all right? Or you can comment and give me engagement. I don't care, but you will be blocked. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that is it. That's the end of the video. Do not forget to drink some water. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye guys.